So in this problem, we have um, all this information and then the actual question, which is if the angle between the rope and the horizontal is 11.1 degrees, find the tension in the rope. So the tension will actually be the same on either side. It's not like the, it's going to be divided. And that's because if you had one length of rope and uh, it was supporting 10 newtons, um, if you bent that rope, it would actually be the same on either side. And that's because it's still connected in the middle. If it wasn't, uh, if, it, if it got cut, then it'd be the tension of two different uh, lengths of rope. But since it's connected, it has the same tension on either side. So going back to the problem, what you can usually do is just draw a free body diagram. So I represented the guy as um, just a dot. And then you draw the forces acting on him. So gravity is going to be acting on him, and then tension is going to be on either side. And then you have the angle right here, 11.1. So here, I just drew a graph to help you see the x and y components, whether they're positive or negative. So you set up the, um, your f uh, components and y components. So what are all the forces in the x direction? Well, there's no forces here, but there are x components here. And the w place where I got these is just, if I drew it here, it's actually from the x component here. But I just drew it up so it'd make a triangle. Um, so here, um, all I'm going to do is find the positive and negative x components. So here, since it would be on the positive x axis, um, uh, all I'm going to do is write that as a positive tension force. Here, um, uh, it's, it's negative, so I'm just going to write that as a negative tension force. So since, um, since this is just Ft minus Ft, that's actually going to equal zero, and we don't even have to worry about the x axis. Now we can continue to the y-axis. So let's look at this. So here um, we do have a force of gravity and, and then we look for the positive components. So since we have two of these, right, that means that each of this, like if we were calculating this one, right, we would have a y component for this one. If we calculated the y component for this one, it, we'd also have a, um, a y component right here. That means there's going to be two y components of um, tension. Uh, how I got the sine 11.1 is right here. If you have the if you have the angle here, um, it'd be opposite over hypotenuse. That'd be sine. Uh, it's sine of 11.1 equals opposite the opposite side over tension, which is the hypotenuse. And then all I did was multiply um, force of tension on either side to get. Uh, force of tension um, times sine 11.1. This is not zero, this is actually opposite, the opposite side, which is what we're trying to find. Uh, so now we have t, uh, I'm sorry, two um, times the force of tension, because if we solve for the y component on either side, um, it would end up actually being the same, because uh, we multiply by two because of the fact that both, uh, both of these angles are 11.1. If they were different angles, then we'd have to calculate the y component for each of those. But since both of these are exactly the same, we can just multiply one of the one of them by two. Next, we um, write the negative part of the y component because both of these were on the positive part. So this one's going to be the negative one, and that's going to be gravity. So all I did for gravity was just multiply the mass, which is 87.6, multiplied by 9.8. So I'll get the force of gravity. And now the important thing is why I set it to zero. So if you go back into the problem, you'll see that the guy is in equilibrium. If he's in equilibrium, when you do force equals mass times acceleration, uh, Newton's second law, uh, the mass times acceleration part just becomes zero because he's not even moving. Um, you don't have to worry about acceleration if he's not moving, therefore um, it will be zero. And so uh, since we don't have to worry about the x component, we can just um, calculate um, the y component. So all I did here, uh, once again, was just um, multiply this out to get um, 858.48. And since I set it to zero, I just added that number to either side. And then after that, just solve for um, force of tension. So divide by 2 sine 11.1. And then you get force of tension is equal to 2,229.56. So what you do now is you just um, check for your final answer. 
So we did want the force of tension. Um, so what you're actually going to do is round it to three sig figs. Is here, everything is in three sig figs. So which, what you'll do is just round it to three sig figs. Since it's a force, it'll be in newtons. And then uh, it's going to be positive um, is it's a force. So, um, uh, so I, I hope that helped and thanks for watching.